Welcome to Save Our Sleep. Tizzy and the Save Our Sleep team believe it's every child's right to receive comfort, a parent's right to demonstrate love, and everyone's right to a full night of sleep. This podcast is not a medical or scientific volume, but a collection of tried and tested solutions and tips based on my many years of experience with babies and young children. Its main purpose is to help parents understand and avoid sleep problems in young babies and toddlers. We'd like to recognise the Wadawurrung people who are the traditional owners of this region which Tizzy and myself live and are recording today's podcast on. We acknowledge and respect that they have taken care of this land and water and raised children in this nation for over an extraordinary 70,000 years. The Save Our Sleep podcast is dedicated to helping you prevent and solve sleep problems while having some fun along the way. We endeavour to discuss all things family related, starting from preconception all the way through to an adult child leaving home and beyond. Some topics may be triggering. If you find this is the case, please reach out to your or your child's health nurse or general practitioner. Welcome back to episode 10 of the Save Our Sleep podcast. What's the crack? Uh, Not much. I don't have a lot of crack. Um, I've got. I wanted to ask you what your crack was because I wanted to ask uh, for a follow up on Ron because we haven't heard in a few weeks, Ron. And I also want to know how your arm is healing. And I think that our listeners might want to know how both of those things are going. So with Ron, as I said in one of the previous podcasts, he was coming out of hospital. He came out of hospital. Mm -hmm. Geelong University Hospital have been amazing. I think when you're ill, you have to pick the right hospital for what illness you have at the time. Oh, absolutely. Because sometimes private hospitals are better, sometimes public Mm -hmm. hospitals are better. Mm -hmm. Some private hospitals are different. For example, when I went to St. John of God's, I had to pay a lot for the gap for my blood tests. I had to have blood cultures every night. Mm. When I went to the Epworth, I didn't have to pay anything for blood cultures. Mm. And then you go to Geelong University Hospital, which is a public one for mm. other things. It just you just depends where you go, what you've got. You've got to look into it. It's not that simple, That's which right. you can't look into if you're in an ambulance and the same what hospital you want to go to. But sometimes if you do have a particular illness, do your research so that when you do end up in an ambulance, like yep. I have a few times... And I regret not getting an ambulance as well when I was very ill with my bowel. Okay. I went to the GP and he said, I'm going to call an ambulance. Mm-hmm. And I said, no, Nathan will drive me. And I actually had to stand up in the van. I couldn't see it. Oh, so okay. it's, yeah. Anyway, so Ron is good. He is out of hospital. He is, they told him that if they, it's interesting because one of Nathan's cousins thinks that I'm exaggerating and then I don't actually exaggerate, even though people think that Irish people exaggerate. And then Nathan was like, (laughs) well, Nathan was like, well, if you were exaggerating, you'd be saying he's dead because he was there was no further way to exaggerate. He was so ill that any exaggeration, you would be saying he had gone. They told him at Geelong University Hospital that they needed to incubate him. Is that the right? Intubate. Intubate. Mm, So that's when you get the uh, breathing tube put. All the way down into your lungs, that involves um, being in an induced coma as an adult, but interestingly enough, not as a premature baby. Oh, does it? Because mm. I was when I I was incubated. Incubated, but yes. I didn't realise there was a difference. Yeah, so you would have been completely out of it. You and cannot be awake and with so it how do they as do an it adult. Babies? I don't. No, it is so bizarre. Um, would absolutely love to know the science or psychology behind it. It's like when they um, would do things like the eye tests on, on the preemie babies, they'd give them a little bit of um, sugar or glucose as their pain relief because it would take their mind mm. off. Similar, I don't know. I don't I wish I knew, but yes. it's an interesting Let's get Kate McCluskey Okay, on. so he was. And she can help us please come on, that. Kate. And I can't believe, so that is huge. If he no, was. So they, no, no, so they didn't. That. So yeah. they said to him, this yeah. is what we need to do. Right. We need to do this, but mm. we cannot do this because if we do this, you will not live. We, You will not make it through because he has a peg, but he has the peg because his lung capacity is so small that they couldn't put him under a general anaesthetic to do the peg in the future so they oh. wind back a few months they were like you're not you will not be strong enough in a few weeks to get the peg fitted so we're going to do it now so that while you're strong enough for- which means if he wasn't strong enough pre-covid 
to go under a general to get a peg fitted, he wouldn't have been strong enough to. So they said to him, we cannot intubate you mm. or whatever the word is, mm. because you will not come out the other side. Oh, yeah, we just have to do the best we can. So we were basically told to mm. prepare for the worst. Mm. Well, no, they did an amazing job. They have brought him back to nearly as good as he was. Mm pre-COVID. Sure. So he is, you know, he is, I'm shocked. He is good. He's in a really good place. And on the COVID subject, which Mm. we, you know, I'm trying not to talk about COVID, but we keep talking about it. A couple of mothers have contacted me and thanked me for not, for, uh, no, have contacted me. I want to thank them Mm. and said that they wish they had been as strong as me and said, you're not going on school camp because St- Killian stayed home from school camp because yes. I thought it was going to be a COVID spreader. Yes. It was a COVID spreader. They have been very ill. And oh, no. I did mention the ball and how we didn't go to the ball because we couldn't afford to this yes. year because of the whole COVID and finances and stuff. And the ball seems to have been a bit of a COVID spreader. So I'm feeling not guilty and very happy That I didn't send. And also Mm. because Kieran has had COVID Mm. and, you know, two weeks on is still a bit sick from COVID. Mm. I am glad that Killian hasn't had it. So there we go. So now I had a question for you. Oh, okay. Which I've had for every podcast since episode four. And I keep forgetting to ask you. I gave you homework to do. Mm. You were supposed to ask Luke to suck his finger for 25 minutes every night. Has he done it? About nipples, about making your nipples. Full disclosure, I completed VCE without doing a single minute of homework. So you said that you tried the swaddle, you swaddled yourself. And I thought Luke would be a great person to try the... uh, Sucking the finger. Sucking the finger. Yep. So, and that's to compare what happens to your nipple. Yes. And so, tell me again, how long do we we want to do it every three hours for a certain amount of time? Well, so I'm saying that Mm. when you have a baby, Mm. well, I'm not actually, sorry. Claire Byron Cook, amazing lactation consultant Mm. and other initials with her name as well Mm. in the United Kingdom. I followed her breastfeeding advice when I have my children. And she says you need to condition your nipples. Ah, oh, yes, that's And right. you shouldn't just put a baby on the boob and let them suck, 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 mm-hmm. suck. And I said you needed to get Luke to try sucking his finger for 25 minutes mm-hmm. once a day and see what happens because yes. it gets ruined yes. and your nipples get ruined. That's why we feed on routine, which is in episode <sighs> something sense. back there on mm-hmm. the importance of a routine, mm-hmm. maybe two or three. There's a link so, to your... Um, yes. Let's to move it. on. This is a very important subject. So the next chapter is chapter four. And so this is podcast episode... 10. 10. And the next chapter is chapter four. Mm. And we are talking about sleep and settling. Mm. And before we talk Mm. about sleep and settling, I want to talk about the fact that save our sleep is a holistic approach. Absolutely. It is not about you have a baby, the baby's not sleeping. Let's put the baby in their cot and let them scream. Let's put the baby in their pram and let them scream. Mm. When I, and this, you had a note to ask me about this and Mm. I'm going to talk about Mm. it now. When I had the hub in Packington Street, I loved the hub. Mm. The hub was a save our sleep, gift shop, come sleep shop, come place for people to come and hang. And we even had people who were older. We had old women who used to come. You did Mrs. Kelly left the hub one day to go and make the bed for a 96-year-old lady who couldn't get the sheets on her bed. We discovered that she had like a queen bed. She was putting them on sideways. Her husband had died and mm. nobody was making her sheets and make it. No, she couldn't get her bed mm. made. And mm. Mrs. Kelly, because it, it was the first time she was changing her sheets without her husband helping. And Mrs. Kelly left the hub, went with this lady to her house. We made her, she made her bed like it was a lovely place. And I'm yawning because we're talking about beds and sheets <laughs> and sleep. And I've started yawning. Yeah. So like Have in the stop. bedding guide. Mm. No. So it's a holistic approach. So people used to come to the hub and I want to tell you about one lady. Mm. She came to the hub and she sat and she had a cup of tea and she was very upset because her baby was about five months old and Mm. had never, ever slept through the night. And I talked to her and I told her and she was going to sleep school and I told her I didn't think she needed to go to sleep school. I think she needed bedding. Mm. And I lent her the bedding and she took all the bedding 
And she left with the Lent Betty. Now I wash it, I sterilized, I make sure it's all good and it's not, you know, and can vouch it. for that. Yes. yes. And I lend it. I always say to people when I lend it, don't you wash it? I'll wash it when mm. I get it back. So there's no point you washing it because mm. I will wash it again, mm. even if you've washed it. So it can smell of Tizzy's laundry, mm, which is yummy. Yes. Mm. So I lent her the Betty. She came back the next day and she was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. I used the bedding and my baby slept all night for the first time ever. So when she said all night, she meant that her baby had slept from like eight o'clock at night yes. to her at six o'clock in the morning. Amazing. To me, that wasn't all night. All night to me is seven to seven <laughs> yeah. with a dream feed. But she was so overjoyed. Yes. Her baby had slept from eight till mm -hmm. six. I'm yawning. We're going to have to stop sleep. talking about sleeping. We're have to, yeah. Yes, but we, we have, have to. to it's on. a chapter on sleep. Yep. Anyway, so... I might have to send Zoe out to the fridge to get me a Red Bull. <laughs> I can do that. I can no, do that. No, so, so, so. She left us, was going to her maternal health nurse, mm. was then going to come back and purchase the bedding. That was her plan. Yes. Yeah. She never came back. Never came back. And I wondered what had happened to her. Well, I then about a year later, she came back with her husband. No, she came back by herself with her mother-in-law. Right. And she was beside herself. She was getting up to her now one-year-old four or five times a night. She was, I would have told you this. Were you there? I, Did you work I, there at the time? Yeah, I remember. And it was awful. She was getting up and her mother-in-law just wanted to borrow the bedding again mm. as an experiment. Mm. So we lent her the bedding, take two. The next day, her husband came in and he was so upset. We had to calm him down. Mm. He was angry. Mm. He wanted to go around to the maternal health nurse. Now, some of them are good and some of them don't really understand what we do. Apparently, she'd gone to the maternal health nurse, mm. said she'd used the bedding and the baby had slept all night. She was so excited. Mm -hmm. She'd gone into the maternal health nurse and mm -hmm. gone. With good news. I yeah. used Tizzy's bedding. I borrowed mm. it from the hub around the corner. My baby's and the nurse said, you can't use bedding. You're going to, you, you comatized your baby. Yep. You're going to overheat your baby. You comatized your baby. Yep. She'd given us the bedding back. Mm. She didn't use it again. Mm. She came she back a year later or yeah. nine months later or yeah. something. She borrowed the bedding. The mm. baby slept all night. The mm. dad is like, it cannot be a coincidence. Mm. He was they. I told him to take the bedding home for the rest of the week, mm. use it every night. Mm. They are my biggest fans now. But Good. they were on their way to sleep school. Mm. Now, I would love to wind the clock back and have that little baby go. To, I mean, I wouldn't. I would never want the baby to go to sleep school. No. But if the baby went to sleep school, mm. would they have just put that baby in the cot to the point where it cried, to the point where it cried so much that it felt like nobody was coming mm. and it just gave up and it just slept? Mm. Or would it have cried so much that it overheated and it vomited? Mm. Like, why are people not doing a holistic approach? Mm. When someone comes to our support group, with anything. I'm sure people are bored by it because you come to the support group and we say, what age is your baby? Was your baby premature or full term? Mm. What weight was your baby? Is your baby breastfed, bottle fed, breastfed, with bottle fed with formula, bottle fed with breast milk? What bottles do you use? What teats do you use? What size do you use? Is the milk hot? All of these things mm. affect. Mm. You shouldn't give your baby cold milk. Is the milk hot? Are you feeding your baby until they're full? Mm. Are you on probiotics? And then breastfeeding. Is your baby on probiotics? Are you on antibiotics? Are you on antidepressants? We need to know all of this stuff. Yeah. It's not just put your baby in their cot and let them scream. We in fact, need... that's the absolute last. Yes. Self-settling is the last step, step, which we will try our hardest to avoid. And I did not have to do yes. it with my boys. It's about getting the timings mm. right mm. and so on. So... Mm. When a baby is born, when they are first born, they will just sleep and sleep. Sorry, Zoe. I think this is going to be very much a me talking at the moment. Absolutely. But yes, this is sleep. Through. This is yes. my thing. Yeah. This is your thing. So when a baby is born, they will sleep and sleep and sleep regardless, like unless they're starving hungry. But if they're full, they'll sleep. Even if they're not warm enough, they'll still sleep and sleep and sleep mm. to a certain point, till about eight weeks. Yeah. Then they suddenly wake up when the needs aren't met. Mm. So and then... They need to sleep in blocks. And if their needs aren't met, it doesn't happen. So mm. we've talked about that in episode one and two. They need to be well fed. They need to be warm. But when they're first born, they will sleep like comatose sleep mm -hmm. if those needs are met and not sleep in sleep cycles. At eight weeks, they start sleeping in daytime sleep cycles. Some people call it a leap. 
Some people call it a sleep regression. Mm. So what do we do at eight weeks? At eight weeks, we need to make sure that where you put them down to sleep and what you put them down to sleep in. So I introduce a safe sleeping bag at eight weeks so that it can be introduced at one month. It can be introduced at a week old. Most people introduce it at about eight weeks. I introduce that at eight weeks so that their feet, if they have no shoes and socks, if they have no shoes, of course they have no shoes, if they have no socks on, mm -hmm. they... The inside of the sleeping bag, please put down hair fornicky on your list for me to talk about so I don't go off subject. Try not to go off subject. Hair fornicke. Uh, I'll know what it is. Okay. Hair tie. Hair, I'll know what it is. Okay. Fornicke. Hair, hair fornicke. So you put them in bed, no socks on. They might have a bundler or a baby grow without feet and they can feel the inside of the sleeping bag. Very important that you buy a sleeping bag that you can use from aged eight weeks through to when you take them out of a sleeping bag, which could be four, five or six years old, you need to buy a sleeping bag where the inside will always feel the same. Mm. Often sleeping bag companies have a different feel to the inside depending on the tog and there will be a different, they will have one and then you'll go back to buy the bigger size and it's changed. Make sure you get one where they're not going to change it. Of course, I'm going to say. Why? I want to know why. Oh, sorry. I'm saying this. Yes. It was talked about in the bedding guide, mm. which you haven't, oh, I don't okay. listen to. So. Oh. The bedding guide is really important. We have a bonus episode called the bedding guide. So I don't bore you in every episode. Do yourself a favor. Listen to the bonus episode, the bedding guide. Okay. Because some children have sensory. It don't know whether it's immunizations. Don't know whether it's the way we are. I do not know what the cause is. Mm. But maybe we're more in tune with our babies. Mm. Maybe we have more time for our babies. Mm. But in modern day society, more babies have sensory issues. Mm -hmm. We have more autism, mm -hmm. more Asperger's. Mm -hmm. Is it more diagnosed? Mm -hmm. Is that why we have more? Okay, don't know. But what I do know is some children don't like the change, the feel of the rub of the fabric on their toes if it changes. Mm -hmm. For example, when my children were little, there was a 0.5 tog sleeping bag, which felt the same as a 0.2.5. But the one tog, which was a different brand to mine, mm -hmm. had a toweling inside my children didn't like it. With the Save Our Sleep sleeping bags, what you don't realise, you as the client, did you know that my 0.5 are two layers of shirt fabric? Mm -hmm. My zero, my 2.5 are two layers of shirt fabric with a fluffy filling. Mm -hmm. it, but you can't feel the fluffy filling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My one tog is the most expensive sleeping bag I make mm -hmm. because I put a layer of really expensive cotton toweling inside to make it one tog mm -hmm. with the layering. But then I still put the shirt fabric on top. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's got this beautiful velour inside mm -hmm. that you can't feel. And that's the expensive part. Mm -hmm. But that's because you can't let the baby feel it because it might become uh -huh. they're going to sleep aid. Sure. Am I making sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. So at eight weeks, they start daytime sleep cycles. And you will see catnapping during the day. How do you avoid this? You avoid it by not letting them suck on a dummy. Sucking on a dummy causes their digestive system to work too fast. Mm. And they fall asleep sucking on the dummy. And then they need the dummy to get from one sleep cycle to the next. Mm. We will talk about dummies more in the dummy section mm. further on. But that's your main reason. If you rock them to sleep and then put them down in their cot or pram or or cot or mm. bassinet or mm. snoo, wherever they sleep, or even if you use a snoo which rocks them to sleep, mm. what happens then if you get older and you can't use it? Mm. Stop using it by eight Question. weeks, I would say. Yeah. Okay. So you the last thing they are thinking of when they fall asleep is what they need to get from one sleep cycle to the next. Right. So I say use a comforter. We should have bought comforters. Yeah. Use a comforter. And I and lots of people on my Facebook group and support mm. and on Instagram have two comforters. Mm. Why? Mm. I think it came from back years ago. We used to have a forum and people used to suggest in there to use two comforters when kids are like 10 or 11 months and they're throwing them out of the cot. Mm -hmm. That's different. Mm -hmm. That's when they're looking for their comforter in the middle of the night. Now, yep. again, some people say, oh, Tizzy Hall you know, all it's about is making profit. Well, why would I not be saying, but have six comforters in your mm -hmm. cot then? Because mm -hmm. that would be more money. Sure. Everywhere you go, you'd have to carry six comforters. Yeah. If you use two comforters, then you will need two comforters in your change bag, two comforters in your pram, two comforters in the washing basket, two comforters in the cot. No. At first, before they are unwrapped, you only need one mm -hmm. comforter. 
Unless you have a child who likes to lick the comforter, you might end up needing to. Mm. But try not to introduce the second at first. Okay? I think it's a good idea to rotate yes. two because yes. if you lose one, no. then the other one. Yes, but no. Yep. Okay. okay. Zoe is right. Mm. It's a great idea to mm. rotate two. Mm. But what happens if you lose one? Mm. And you've rotated two. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Then you buy a new one and your child doesn't accept it because no, it feels different. That's what I mean. Yeah. So, so hopefully... you can't rotate two. You have to rotate six. Oh, well, yeah. And that's why we... <laughs> of course. That's why That'd we be best, have... Yeah. Mm. That's why we have the packs where mm. the more you buy, mm. the less they cost. Mm. So, sorry, we're talking about comforters now. On the comforters there's a tag. I'm lost and they found. So if you lose your comforter, contact us mm -hmm. because more people contact us Now, I have a theory on that. Mm. If somebody owns one comforter and they lose it, mm. they realize they've lost it. People who buy 15 or 16 comforters, which they do, we have people who buy 15 or 16 comforters, because they've got so many, they never realize that they've lost mm. one. Mm. But what's the better way to do it? Do you buy 15 at first and rotate them mm. on and then you never worry and eventually mm. you get down to one and eventually it's gone? Mm. Okay, I would always, if you can afford it, I would recommend you have... Six, you can buy them on our second-hand page because mm. some people buy them and don't use them mm. and they're still brand new on the second-hand page. Mm. Although I do find it funny when people say on the second-hand page, I'm selling a brand new comforter never used and the knots are open because if it's never been used, how is the knot open? Sure. So there's a tip when you're buying off the second-hand page huh? or if you're selling, shut the knots so Tizzy doesn't think <laughs> it's actually been used. Anyway, I would put one comforter in and then they get used to that. Yes. If they're wrapped, you can use the comforters from zero to six months. Okay, okay we'll talk about it more on the comforter topic, yep. not now. Sounds good. Eight weeks, daytime sleep cycles. About six months, we start to see the first nighttime sleep cycles where they start waking up at five o'clock in the morning first or maybe nine o'clock at night. They'll have either start, let's say your baby's first nighttime sleep cycle is five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So you put them to bed at seven and they wake up five in the morning. Then six weeks later, they go to bed at seven, they wake at nine and five. Mm. Then six weeks after that, seven, nine, eleven and five. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as they get older, the nighttime sleep cycles right. start. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you need to make sure how you put them to bed is. How they'll find themselves when they awake. Exactly. So when they wake up between sleep cycles, when they wake up between sleep cycles, everything needs to be exactly the same as it was when they went to bed. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where bedtime rituals is the mm. next thing in this chapter. Mm. Let's talk about a two and a half year old or a three year old. Mm. Yeah, If you take them into their bedroom, put them into bed and start reading them a story and they start, you won't even notice. Mm. You do not notice mm. that they get drowsy while you're reading mm. them the story. You don't mm. notice. Mm. It's like they they fall asleep. So you leave the room after reading the story and they fall asleep. But when they wake up in the middle of the night, they don't remember that they were left alone. They remember that you were sitting mm -hmm. there reading the story mm -hmm. and they want that nice, happy feeling yep. back. Yeah. So this is why we say do your wide awake time mm. 20 minutes before bed. So mm. do your nice story. Mm -hmm. Yes, when they get older, do stories mm. at bedtime in their bedroom. Absolutely, yeah. But uh, if you find that they're waking during the night and needing you then the first thing I would do is cut back that bedtime ritual yes and make sure that they're not falling asleep yeah with you whatever you're doing in yeah. the room that yep. they're not getting Singing that drowsy cuddling, falling asleep yeah. so I say so lots of people say oh you've got to wind them down and give them a massage and get them mm. sleepy and have dark rooms and last feed I'm the opposite mm. I'm like you want to, the most important thing you can teach your child is the skill of sleep. Mm. I believe just from looking at Nathan when we go traveling that his mum must have rocked him or patted him or fed him <laughs> or cuddled him to sleep, right? Mm. Because he is so jealous because we get on an airplane, boom, I'm asleep. Ah. We, I can get up in the middle of the night, go to the kids, come back into bed, asleep. Oh, that's I can amazing. I can get up and, and answer 10 too. emails and come back and go straight to sleep. Oh, he can't. Yeah. So you the most and I was of course the what the fourth fifth fourth third fourth mm. third child. Mm. Uh actually my parents had always had extra children the same as okay. Nathan and I oh, which nice. is always confusing as to how many was in actually in <laughs> our family. We always had lots of cousins around as well. So mm. my mum and we also had my mum was grieving like when I look back in my childhood like she had lost a baby and that mm. was really hard mm. back then because do you know that when they lost a baby to cot death, mm. 
they had to go to the police station because it was guilty of smothering your baby and you had to prove yourselves innocent. Yeah. Like, how so, awful is that? It's just so, you know, so teach your babies how to sleep. So bedtime ritual is really important. And then yep. how long we sleep. Like, that's, you know, so, like, you know, a newborn will sleep, you know, 15 to 17 hours. And then by the age of three, they'll need to sleep 13 hours in mm. a time frame. I won't bore you with mm. that. It's in the book. Mm. We're not going to discuss that now. Mm. Bathing your baby. Look, I don't shower babies. I bath babies. Babies don't like the shower. They've got to like try and close their airways when they're in the shower mm. in case you put their face under mm. it. And do you ever go in the shower? And do you ever, you are in the shower as an adult. Mm. This happens very rarely, but it does happen. As an adult, you're in the shower and you breathe in the water and it burns. Mm. Has that ever happened to you? I don't think so. So you, but I shower. I shower a bit funny because I can't get water in my ears and I don't want my hair to get wet. So I do you got my remember face. as a child being thrown in a swimming pool? Well, again, swim? can't get water in the ears. So uh, no, no. I remember being thrown in and that that, oh, that yeah, So horrible. do it. Breathe in the water. It's horrible. Mm. It gives you this horrible burning sensation. Mm. And a lot of parents shower their children, babies, mm. and they don't like it. Like they think, oh, it's lovely, and they have a shower with dad. If you do it and whatever, it's it's fine. And I'm not saying it's the end of the world, but cool. yeah. But I, I just put yourself Bars in the better. babies. <laughs> put yourself in the baby's yeah, shoes. They have no sure. control. Mm. <clears throat> they don't in the bath either, but at least they're not breathing in the water, mm. you know. So the babies, oh gosh, every baby I've ever met enjoys a bath. It is soothing and calming, and quite often something that you can do if you just you've tried everything and baby's not stopping crying. Put them in the bath, and they just yeah. Relax. And it's put a, a nice way to end burper the day. or burpers over the yes. baby in their first bath. So we really don't want it. We don't need mm. to talk about mm. bathing and stuff. So we're talking about sleep and settling. Yeah. So we're skipping forward. If you want to know about the bathing, read it in the book. But mm. bathing is very important. Swaddling. So swaddling your baby is very, very important. Mm. Do not, do not, do not swaddle your baby in a swaddle where the arms are up by sort of at your ear height or even at your shoulder height, and there's a zip up the front. Now, if you even think back to five years ago, maternal health nurses did not tell you to stop wrapping your baby at eight weeks because those swaddles were not common. Did you know that if a baby is in a dangerous swaddle and rolls to their tummy and passes away, the swaddle's not taken off the market? A certain amount of babies it has to happen to. Mm. They're not safe. Like... Mm. What, have we got to wait for X amount of babies to have an accident in these swaddles before they get taken off the market? Will mm. they even get taken off the market? Yes, they are safe from zero to eight weeks. Mm. But after that, they're not safe, especially if you don't use the right amount of bedding. But my thing is, why would you swaddle a baby in something for the first eight weeks that you need to take away mm. and then change to something else? Yep. Good point. Would you do that? Why would you do that? I don't know. But people do that. I think it comes back to the, the, the bit where we think because we might not feel comfortable having our arms down like this, you think that your baby's not. So you think that somehow that's more comfortable, but actually like sleeping a whole night like that. Try it. Probably not that. I ask all of my clients, readers and friends mm. to get into bed and try sleeping with your hands up like that mm. up your hands bent you'll have to look at the youtube clip to see but your hands bent it's not it's not good mm. like why would you do that i don't know uh, i swaddle with a stretch jersey double wrap swaddle and you put your arm their arms across their chest and babies like it and they have good hip movement it's really really important that the swaddle you use is to save our sleep double wrap. No, that's not what I was going to say. <laughs> it's really important that the swaddle you use allows good hip movement. Mm -hmm. We need hip movement. Mm -hmm. While I'm talking, Zoe, don't forget you need a question for in a few minutes. Mm, from a reader. You have got a question. Yep. Good. Okay. So swaddling plays a really, really important part of teaching your baby to sleep. Mm. You need to... Swaddle your baby and we would recommend you swaddle your baby with a stretch jersey swaddle so that you can use it right through to about nine or ten months old. Now, sleeping aids. What's the difference between a sleeping aid and a comforter? 
So a sleeping aid is no. What's the difference between a good aid and a bad aid? Mm. So a a, a mm. sucking your thumb might be classed as a bad aid. Mm. Some people think it's I not think good. It's okay because it doesn't involve parent intervention. Yes. Mm. So some people think it's not good because they can damage their nail. Oh, of course, they can teeth. damage their teeth. Yeah, of and then at some point, you need to retrain the brain to not need to suck mm -hmm. to sleep. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. I don't know if sucking your thumb fingers should be good or should be bad. It's not, you don't need your help. Mm. So you, they don't need your help to get the thumb in in the mm. middle of the night. So is it good? Is it bad? I think ultimately it's not the best habit for a human being to get into. And I've known um, teenage boys that still suck their thumbs. And it, especially when they're tired. Yes, especially when they're tired or feeling anxious or, or something like that. My, um, my, boys actually suck their thumbs um so it's not it's not a healthy habit and it would definitely be very germy but as far as um not requiring a parent to come in and put a fallen out thumb back in the mouth um and getting a good night's sleep and being able to self-soothe um I think and they be can't fair to bite say, so a dummy mm -hmm. you shouldn't if you look at a dummy packet mm -hmm. you should never ever leave a child unattended with a dummy because mm -hmm. they can bite the end off mm -hmm. and choke mm -hmm. you can't choke on your thumb they're not going to bite true. the end off so okay. you know so is sucking thumbs good or bad jury's out on that mm -hmm. uh, sure. some dentists say don't let it some dentists do but if you wrap your baby you're going to eliminate the sucking which isn't ideal if they've been in your womb and they've always sucked their thumb in your <laughs> womb and then they've come out and you're mm -hmm. wrapping them and they can't suck but the younger they are, yeah, the, the easier it is to retrain the going to sleep pathways mm -hmm. from awake to asleep. So we don't know if a dummy is a good aid or a bad aid. We know mm -hmm. sucking on a dummy, that sorry, we don't thumb. know if a thumb, yep. we don't know if a thumb yep. is a good aid or a bad aid. We know sucking on a dummy is a bad aid because at some point your child has to give that dummy mm. up. Now it does all sorts of things. Dummies affect your speech. So if you go back and look at me, there was a show in Australia called The Kerry Ann Kennelly Show. Mm -hmm. And I got the last word and I've never been on. They never. She doesn't do the shows anymore, but they told me I was never coming back because I got the last word. Because I was explaining on that interview, which you can find on YouTube, mm -hmm. that okay, a child okay, okay. who sucks on a dummy, we, we child who sucks on a dummy used to be, it was called a dummy. So in Ireland, it's called oh. a dodie. And in America, it's called a pacifier. Mm -hmm. And in S Singapore, sometimes it's called a comforter. Mm -hmm. And in Australia, they're called dummies. And in the UK, they're called dummies. And I think it comes from the fact that they worked out that children who sucked on a dummy had delayed speech. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at a baby who's lying in a cot sucking on a dummy, they're lying there going suck, 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 suck. Yes. When you look at a baby who's lying in a cot without a dummy, they're moving their head of going, course, ma, 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 yes. da, 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 what a good ba, point. Ba, da, 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 yes. da, da. And they're practicing their yes. speech. So that's one issue. Now, mm. on the Kerry Ann Kennelly show, she said, So basically, Tizzy, you're saying children with dummies are dumb. Oh. And I just went, No. No. And you're not supposed to. And then they go, <laughs> Cut. And the rule is that when they go, Cut, it's cut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's how she was ending the show. And if you watch it, it's really funny because I go, no, that is not what I said. I said, and I kept talking and you're not supposed cheeky. to do that. And we ran over time. Cheeky. Well, she was cheeky ending it, I trying guess. to make out that I said that. And I guy. didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. I was talking about research. So that's sure. right. So dummies. Okay. Dummies also can fall on the ground, get dirty. Yes. And then licking the dummy on your... Some people say it's not good to suck the dummy and then put it in your child's mouth because mm -hmm. you're moving some mouth bacteria. Okay. okay, you'll have to look into that. I'm right. not the expert. Uh, at some point, you they fall out in the middle of the night. You've got to go in and replace oh, them. I couldn't, I couldn't the, stand that. <laughs> some people say, I had a dummy and I never went in the night. Well, you realise that those kids weren't dependent on the dummy because sure. the parents didn't go in and they learned to use something else to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. uh, the Also with the dummy, you... At some point, you need to take it away. Like if they want to go away in school camp in year three, they're not going to want a dummy. Mm. But that's mean. Like taking it away is is mean, mm. you know. Mm. And then sometimes you can't buy the same one. Mm. Now, in special care, I went in and they'd given one of my children a dummy. I think it was Dara. And I was really upset. And I, to this, yes, it was Dara. Mm. And to this day, I believed it ruined his breastfeeding mm. because... 
I didn't want him having a dummy and I went in and he had a dummy and it, and I've talked about this before. It was very much them and me, they mm. and me. And mm. I felt like he wasn't my baby and I felt like I didn't know about premature babies in hospital and how mm. they had to be looked after. And I had to do what I was told to do. And I was told he needs a dummy to learn how to suck. Right. But I soon realised that he was sucking and getting no milk. And then by the time he came out to feed mm. out of the humidity crib, isolate to feed, he'd no energy. Yeah. He'd used all the energy sucking and didn't get rewarded. So is that a bad thing that they suck, suck, suck and get no reward? And the pet hate, we always talk about my pet hates, is you're sitting at a cafe and there's a baby and the mum's breastfeeding the baby. And look, if you're comfortable breastfeeding in public without a shawl, just do it. Like I, I, I find it really hard. There was a clip on one of the TV shows, mm. was it Sunrise, that was going around Instagram or mm. Facebook? Mm. And this poor lady mm. had a screaming baby. And it was all, I was thinking, why aren't they saying, let's just pause for a second, get the baby on the boob. It was clearly a breastfed baby. Mm -hmm. Get the baby on the boob mm -hmm. and then start talking again. Like, mm -hmm. why was this koshy guy talking over, over, over this moment. This, and I know everyone was going, oh, it's Mother's Day and it's funny and it's great mm -hmm. and it's and it's real mothering and real parenting. But I was just thinking, real mothering. I'm sure I wasn't the only person sitting there going, put the baby on the sure. boob, put the baby on the boob. Real mothering and parenting is getting your boob out if you've got a breastfed baby and it's feed time. Clearly it was feed time. And mm. it was so sad mm. that... She, I would have. Couldn't do that. Yeah, it was. And um, why like couldn't. couldn't she just say, "Can you just pause the recording for a second? Sure. I'm like you did it on the last podcast. <laughs> just pause. I'm Sorry, going to the I'm toilet, to or yep. just um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yep. the this business of you go to a cafe and you see a baby mm -hmm. and it's been fed, mm -hmm. and then the mum stops feeding it, be it the bottle or the breast, and the baby is screaming, and they put a dummy in. The baby's screaming because it's hungry. Mm. why it's like imagine if you were crying because you wanted something and someone just came along and shoved a dummy in your I mouth know. and didn't let you talk so mm. I'm saying a dummy is not a good sleep aid now a comforter is a good sleep aid because if you push the hey here's a little thing how mm. about everybody who is listening to this podcast on sleep and settling. Mm -hmm. If it is your very first time lis listening, or if it's going to be your very first time purchasing from Save Our Sleep, put a promo code in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's. What will we make the promo code? Pod ten. Okay. Yep. And what are they going to get? And we will send you a free comforter. Hmm. Only if it's your very first time purchasing from us. So it has to be, and you have to spend over a hundred dollars. Here's the rules. Spend over $100. It's your first time ever purchasing from Save Our Sleep and put POD10, P-O-D-10, as a promo code, and we will send you out a free comforter with your order. Okay? That's so, very generous of you. Thank you. Yeah, they're Why actually they... 33 99 so it's mm -hmm. a good, generous mm -hmm. gift. Very, and yeah. first-time purchases, normally you get this as well, may put a free set of spoons in, my curved spoons. Oh, we'll talk about those later. Okay. Yes. So, comforter is good. Because you can put it down your top, let it smell of you, mm -hmm. get it down your top, mm -hmm. get it smelling of you. Mm -hmm. Have, if you can afford it, six of them on rotation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Always one in the cot, yes. one in the wash, one in the change bag, one at granny's house, one in the glove. But I have emergency ones now in the car in case we have to go into hospital mm -hmm. because of, you know, I always think, what happens if we're in a car crash mm -hmm. and we don't have our comforters? Yeah. So I have an emergency bag that the kids That's don't know nice. about. And I offered one to a lady in Geelong and she must think, why she give me a dirty comforter? It was like <sighs> she contacted us going, I need a comforter. And it was the right one. And I'm yeah. like, oh, Nathan's near your house. He could lend you our one. She was like, no, I'll drive out and buy a new one. It was like, oh, they are clean. Yeah. Like I wash them. But anyway, so comforters, you can put them in on your top, get them to smell of you, put them next to baby. Mm. The baby can turn, can smell you. Mm. It's something that the baby can use Independently. As a sleep cue, yep. a sleep aid. Mm -hmm. If they've got to go to daycare, they can have their comforter. Mm -hmm. Their first day of school, mm -hmm. their comforter can be in their school bag. Mm -hmm. You know, Kieran had his comforter in his school bag for Kinder 2. We do Kinder 2 at Geelong College. Kinder 2, Kinder 3, Kinder 4, mm -hmm. and prep. Yep. And now it's not in his bag, I noticed. So, you know, and then we'd COVID and he wasn't at school. Now it's not in his bag. So they like to have them in their bag. And the other thing is they help with flathead syndrome. So... Oh, 
That was what the Royal Children's Hospital contacted. Right. So a lady from the Royal Children's Hospital contacted me and said, I am right, that the mattresses that are soft and firm do help to stop the cot head syndrome. Oh, great. Okay. The flat head syndrome, which is in one yes. of our podcasts. Great. I kept asking Zoe, what was that note about? Mm. It's about the fact that we have a sheepskin mm. under cotton. So when you're looking for a cot mattress, try and get one that's got sheep wool between the mattress and the cotton top because it helps you to avoid flat head syndrome because okay. it gives a softness which is what they used to use mm. but it's not made in a way it's been stretched it hasn't been made so if the baby rolls they're going to suffocate mm -hmm. like you cannot put them on a sheepskin mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. that reason of course. sorry for going off topic but comforter you put the comforter on one side yes. and then you move it to the other side and ah, then that yes. helps you to avoid flat yeah. head syndrome fantastic okay yeah so good aids bad aids yes. so rocking uh dummy comfort comfort is good aid rocking mm. dummy patting they would all be bad aids people will say well why tizzy with your settling advice do you say to leave the baby for a certain amount of minutes which mm. we'll talk about in the next podcast mm. or when we get to it in the book but then you're saying that's a bad aid because the idea is if you leave your baby to have a bit of a yell for a few minutes then you come in and pat them. Eventually they realise, well, mum's just going to pat me to sleep or they get used to going to sleep at that time and they start falling asleep in the first few minutes and the patting does not become an aid. So, comforters. Now, Luke's story very quickly. Oh, we've got a Luke story. Yeah. And it's not named after your Luke. No. So, Luke's story. We better just finish talking about comforters for mm. a minute before we move on, uh, before we end. Otherwise, we'll be starting on that in chat in podcast 11. Mm -hmm. So Luke's story, I'm not going to look at it in the book, but I'm mm. pretty sure it's when uh, people had gone out to the house, we'd got their baby sleeping, he'd been sleeping, he'd slept every night for about four or five months and suddenly he wasn't sleeping and we couldn't work out why and he'd go to bed and he'd cry emotionally and I am telling you this, I'm yawning because I'm talking about going to sleep and I'm yawning. <laughs> I actually haven't had my coffee yet for the day. Uh, so. You haven't, no. No. So... He, I'm telling you this from memory, so it might not be exactly sure. what's in the book. Mm -hmm. But so he was crying emotionally. In the end, I crawled in and noticed he was like rubbing his uh, cuff, like he was bending his fingers down. Mm -hmm. And I realized he was in short armed pajamas and he was using the I sleeve of his pajamas as his comforter. That was his way so of it's really sleep. important that every child finds something to fall asleep yes. with. And what they find to fall asleep with is their time. comforter. Yes. And if you uh, if you don't know what their comforter is, mm. then you can't give it to mm. them if they're in hospital mm. or in a plane or you want them to sleep in the pram. So it's really important you know what the comforter mm. is. And then tricks of the trade, well, we have said, put it down your top, get mm -hmm. it smelling of you. Yeah, lovely. Try get one if you know before your baby's born. We always know the sex of a lot of babies that save our sleep before anyone else does because a lot of mums now find out what flavour the baby is mm. and then they choose the comforter, pink or blue or whatever, depending on the flavour of the baby. Yes. And we know and we uh -huh. keep we're very good at keeping secrets, but right. you can have them, prepare them, wash them. Yeah. I love baby photos. Oh, the other thing you can do to get mm. a little prize is if you share a video on our Instagram page, just our Instagram page. If you share a video on the Instagram page of you unwrapping your baby where they do this amazing stretch, we will give you a $30 gift voucher for Save Our Sleep. So you share a video of your baby stretching and we give you a $30 gift voucher Cute. only because that gives me, Joy. I'm paying you $30 <laughs> for a happy, fuzzy feeling yeah. of watching the That's stretch. Yeah. I love the stretch. Mm -hmm. Love. And you can do it 10 times and yeah. get yourself a mattress. It's How's lovely. that? Share it 10 times on Instagram and get $300 ah, for a mattress. So uh, tricks tickets. of the trade is now the other thing about comforters is when your baby is about 10 months old, mm. they will throw it out of the cot for the first time. Yes. Because they don't want to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And Nathan came to me once and said, Dara's throwing his comforter out. What do I do? And I said, read the book. <laughs> and huh? exactly 10 months, they throw it out. Wow. It's interesting. And what you do is the first time you give it to them and then you leave it out so the first time they do it, you just go in and give it to them. But if they start doing it at every bedtime, you do not give it to them mm. for a few minutes. You let them actually get upset and realize it's not coming back. Mm. Tell then them you go well. in 
well, you tell them yeah. as well. Yeah. But you say to them, if if you throw your comforter out, well done, Zoe. Mm. Yes, you talk to them. Mm. If you throw your comforter out tonight, I'm not coming back in and giving it to you. Mm-hmm. You'll have to go to sleep without mm-hmm. it. And then you follow through. Well, you might say, I'm I'm it will not be coming straight back in because mm. mummy's got to go and wash the dishes mm. or something. Mm. So that you can go in and give it back to them when they've realized it's not coming back. But yeah, and then the third time that you don't go back, you don't give it to them. They have to learn that they threw it out. Their choices, Mm -hmm. actions and consequences. And the earlier you teach your children actions and consequences, the better. It's really important. You can teach them actions and consequences from day one. The action is their choice and the consequence is. And I'm a big believer in if your child takes crayons and draws on the wall, do not lose your cool with them. Because they didn't know it was wrong. No. How do they know mm. it's wrong until they've done it mm-hmm. and you've told them it's wrong? The second time they draw on the wall, then you can put them in the thinking place to mm. think about their action. 100%. Not the naughty corner, not mm. the naughty chair, mm. the thinking spot, which is in the toddler book. But we won't talk about that now. Mm. It's in the toddler book. And we are going to take a reader's question. Today's question is from Tara, and her question is: Could you? Didn't we do her question last week, or we're we getting another question from the same Tara. I don't have a memory like yours, Tizzy okay. Hall. So no, I can't. Okay, remember. so go with Tara's question. Could you explain the theory behind the self-settling guide timings? Yes, I saw that. And on the page where you've got that from, yeah. Tara's question below, I think we've all... Anyhow, it doesn't matter. I think we've all, we're done one of her questions. It doesn't matter. We can do Tara again. Tara, you get yourself another $20 gift voucher because we are doing another oh, of your I questions. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, another one of her questions. Okay, but I'm yes. sure we haven't answered this. No, no, we haven't answered this one. So, so self-settling how, guide timings, for example, how have you worked out Tizzy Hall? How have you worked out to protest cry for four minutes and then assisted um, 22 minutes, etc. that sort of thing, which is like bizarrely, bizarrely spot on. And it is because like people contact me and they say, you know, with their eight month old, mm. I say, I need you to let them yell for 46 minutes and then go, you have mm. to get for it. And then people say to me, they got to 45 yes. minutes. And I say, are you sure it wasn't 46? And then they go, It was. It was like (laughs) 46.3 because it brings us back to that same thing. Tizzy Hall says all babies are robots Mm. because, you know, Zoe, Mm. I'm a numbers person. I'm going to try again. One of your babies was in hospital for 99 days and one of your babies was in hospital for 121 days. That's three weeks longer. Mm. That's a long time. time. Yeah. So at some point you need to give me one of the kids for three weeks so you can spend that much time with the other child. (laughs) Anyway, so I'm a numbers person Mm. and I'm a science person. Like Mm. at school I did maths, applied maths, Mm. and I was always into like numbers. And so when I used to go to people's homes and teach their babies how to sleep, I wrote stuff down and I started to realize that all eight week old babies had a little protest for four minutes. Mm. Well, it wasn't eight weeks. That was about two weeks old. Mm. And then all 12 week old babies had a protest for X amount of time. And it's not just as much to look at the baby as the mother. In some of the younger age groups, it's like the mother can only physically stay out of the room for four minutes before she has to go in and pat <laughs> or do something, you know. Mm. So some of it's about looking at the mother, okay. you know, as well as the baby. And then I found that all babies of about, you know, eight months protest for mm. 46 minutes. Wow. And you get to like 44 and the cry changes and it goes to this really high pitched, intense scream. And that's when normally the father's like, I've got to go in, I've got to go in. And if you can just get past Past that, Mm -hmm. they stop. And one of the main differences between my settling and other settling is I don't do control crying. And with control crying, a baby falls asleep from their sobbing. They're going, (laughs) and half the time they vomited. And a baby who protest cries goes to sleep from quiet. Mm -hmm. So they will yell and scream and yell and scream and and yell and yell. And there's pauses and there's gaps and there's changes in the tone. Mm. And then they will get to 46 minutes and they will stop. Mm. And they will either stop and just go quiet or they'll stop and go quiet for five minutes and then start again and something. So 46 minutes. And you know, the worst, worst 
worst thing when you're teaching a toddler to sleep. What? When the yelling is reasonable, you can put up with it. Hmm. When they stop hmm. and they're standing in their cot, so they've stopped yelling and they're standing and they're holding onto the cot sides and they're starting to fall asleep and their head's oh. going down and their head's about to tip the side of the cot and then they lift their head up again and sometimes they even will tip their, not bang their head, but mm. knock their head on the side of the cot mm. and they lift their head up again and then they start, you know, and, and you think, you know, and they're standing and they're not crying. That's the worst. And they can stand for hours. Mm. Mm. When you're teaching an 18 month old for the first time the skill of going to sleep, they can stand for hours. And then eventually after ages, and that's the worst. The mm. worst is when they're standing half asleep. That's worse than yelling. It mm. really is. Mm. Yeah, and imagine. then eventually they sit down and then they start falling asleep in the folded position <laughs> and they fall asleep folded over. And it's not safe to leave them like that. Mm. You're going to have to go in and mm. unfold them because mm. that would not be good for their circulation. Mm. And then the other thing which becomes really, really hard, which we all have, is when an older child starts yelling mum or dad. Oh, yeah. That's that worse when they're using their words. Yeah. Anyway, on that note, we would like you to let us know if you're enjoying the podcasts. Please come to the Instagram page and put comments up onto the podcast because we're going to stop doing them. If people aren't telling us <laughs> that you like them and you love them, will we stop? <laughs> we enjoy them too much to stop. Yeah, and bad. subscribe to the YouTube channel, download the podcasts, rate it, rate the podcasts. Give us some feedback. Get the people. bedding so that you can join the support group and you mm. can put your questions up. Mm. Give us feedback. Yeah. Let us know what you think. And if you are a health professional who would like to come on and do a bonus episode, or if you're a mum who would like to come on and mm. give your story in a bonus episode, mm. uh, please do. Yep. We will do bonus Untouched. episodes could be guests and then people Definitely. don't have to watch them. Yep. Yeah, and I'm so, I'm looking for some time off soon. Um, so well, by the time this podcast goes to some. air, I've yeah. got a feeling you may have had your baby, or you may be about to have your baby because so, you will be due yeah. in six days. Yeah. So Tizzy needs some guests, and we'd just love to hear from. Actually, anyone no. That this podcast contribute. is going to go to air after your due date. Yes, this one will be. So this podcast is going to go to air on the on your due date on the twelfth of. June, oh, Zoe's so. and Kieran will be eight a few days earlier. Yep. Zoe's lucky due date is this podcast. Podcast number ten is on Zoe's due date. Ooh, will so go she to the socials and see, or will if, she not have I had her baby? Her and is it a boy baby or a girl baby? Is she going to be a mother of three boys or a mother of of two boys and a and a unisex baby or what do we call babies who are no gender non-binary? Yeah, is that yes. the term? Is that the term? Or are you going? I'm to sure have... everyone knows. I'm sure uh, our, our well, I'm calling knows. it Benno. It's, so it's, it's a boy. It's definitely a boy. I've been told it? it's definitely a boy. But yeah. that doesn't well, always mean definite. It's not always definite. Mm. You don't know till the fat lady sings. Well, we will see. But um, Go yeah, to the come socials. and check, check us out on Instagram, and you'll be able to see. Okay, so, Thank we'll you, you all. Give us a five star or one star. Give us a star. Just give us a star. We yeah. want to know what you think. Yeah. See you. Bye. Bye. Have a good time. <laughs> You have been listening to the Save Our Sleep podcast, brought to you by the International Baby Whisperer Proprietary Limited. You will find more information about the Save Our Sleep philosophy, product support, and how to watch the mini clips that accompany this podcast at saveoursleep.com. You may find the Save Our Sleep social media accounts by searching Tizzy Hall on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, for all my how-to videos and to watch the podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please rate the podcast and share it with your friends. I would like to thank Zoe Starr for co-hosting, Ben at Fundamental Studios Geelong for the amazing podcast recording room, Nick Dale at Primer Films for this production, and most of all, you, the listeners. Without you, there would be no reason for this podcast. Please enjoy, stay safe, and Zoe and I will look forward to chatting with you again next week.